Hi, this is Aaron from Elite Hearing Centers of America, and today we'll be going over ear lavages and how to safely perform it. Obviously, the first thing I want to do is to perform otoscopy. I always want to use the bridge and brace technique, and I want to have a clean speculum. When I'm looking in the ear, other than looking for any type of conditions which might warrant a medical referral off the bat, I also want to see how much wax is in there, where it's located, and the consistency of it. If I notice that I have wax very far into the canal, lavage is really my only option. I don't want to bring a curette that close to the eardrum. The other situation is that if the earwax is very light in color, it's usually softer and easier to remove. But if I run into wax that's very hard, very dark, and has probably been in there for a while, I'm probably going to want to use some assistance. In most of your offices, you're going to find some sort of earwax softener. Now if I utilize this, I want to put two to three drops into the ear of interest. And once I have the drops in place, I like to actually use one of my inserts, yellow or tan, to keep that liquid in place. These have a more waxy film on it than a cotton ball, and therefore it won't just suck up the earwax softener so it can do its job. I also want to make sure that I let this sit for at least five minutes. If I put it in and then quickly lavage after it, it will be a waste of time. The other situation when I go to lavage, you're going to notice that most of your offices have something like this. I want to make sure that the water is nice and warm. Not only is it going to make removing the wax easier, but if I do room temperature or cold water, the patient can become dizzy or nauseous. You'll notice on these we'll have a little tag on the front. This will let me know if it's cool. The next one will say OK, which is where I want to be, or if it's too hot. If you don't have this on it, a full bottle is about a minute in the microwave, half a bottle is about 30 seconds. The other situation that you'll notice is the tips that go on these are very, very safe. The way it's designed is I can't push it too far into the ear. It comes out in three streams so I can hit the wax in different areas, but because of all of the venting, I won't have enough pressure to really worry about perforating an eardrum. If I do need a little bit more pressure when doing this, you can always find a little catheter tip that's usually in your vacuum kits. Now this will increase the pressure and it might make my job easier, but I'm also increasing the risk of perforation, so definitely be careful. If I notice that after doing my lavage, I bring in the wax close to me, I can go ahead and possibly use my curette. I want to use all the tools that I have because once I start doing a lavage, I only have so many attempts before the ear becomes inflamed or red and I'm going to have to throw in the towel. So if I start to do some of my lavage work, I get some wax, and maybe I notice that I've hit a wall. I want to see where this wax is located, and there's two things I can do. One, you'll notice that all of your offices have a curette. Now I like to order the nylon loop. This is more of a plastic material, and it's safer. The other ones are a metal loop. I like to avoid those. But the situation here is that there's two things I can do. I can try to get behind the wax and roll that towards me. Or if it's still occluded, I can at least disrupt the face with my curette, and this way when I go back to my lavage, I'm hitting it in a different area, and hopefully that will start to break it up. The other thing that you want to utilize anytime you're looking into the ear is that instead of just utilizing your otoscope to have light or maybe even the curette, you also should have goggles. This is another light source and a way to look into the ear very well. Now sometimes I'll notice that the wax I can actually possibly grab because it's closest to me, or sometimes it's not even wax that's an issue. It's actually a skin situation called epithelial migration, where I can actually grab some of that and remove it slowly. And I'm sure at some point in your career you're also going to notice a dome in somebody's ear. Now, you'll also have a, to a tool like this, which is an alligator clamp. Now when I'm utilizing this, there's two things I can do. One, use my goggles. Another situation is to have your patient care coordinator actually hold the otoscope so you can actually see in there. And I always want to pull back on the ear and then with my tool kind of move the tragus forward. And you'll see that in some of our videos that will be attached to this. The other thing to take into consideration is that none of this will become easy to you unless you practice. So when you have patients that need to have their ears cleaned, go ahead and do it. You'll become a lot more comfortable with the tools and before you know it, your medical referrals will be down because you'll be very comfortable cleaning out ears even if they are occluded. And the other situation is if you're in an office that's doing lyrics, this will make your job a lot easier. But obviously if it's something to where you are unsuccessful, 
or you're starting to cause inflammation and of course bleeding, don't hesitate to have them come back or refer them out. Patient safety always comes first. Okay, so now to go over some of the techniques that we were talking about. The first thing that I want to always do is look into the ear. And there's a couple ways to bridge and brace. A lot of times what you want to do is at least make sure that you feel safe about it. The situation of using someone else's technique to bridge and brace, if it's not something natural to you, will probably end up being more dangerous. Now that I know what type of wax I'm dealing with, when I start to do my lavage, there's one thing that I always want to do, and that is to put down some paper towels to make sure that I keep the patient as dry as possible. The other situation that will make my life a lot easier is I'll actually have the patient themselves hold this. What this does is let me use both of my hands to do what I need to. What I'm going to do at this point is always pull back on the ear. Instead of redirecting this, I can also redirect the ear. This way I have a lot more control if I want to change up angles to get out the wax that is necessary. You'll also notice the way that this is made. I can't really push it in too far to cause injury. This is why it's a much safer tip to use. Now, if I remove wax, but now I've started to hit a wall and I'm now unsuccessful, the situation I want to do is take this from the patient and I want to start using my curette technique. So the situation I want to do here is once again making sure that I'm bridging and bracing in some way and I always want to pull on the ear. This will really allow me to see very well in the ear even though anytime I'm observing the ear I should always be using my otoscope. What I want to do now is that when I remove the wax or disrupt it, I just want to make sure that I'm not touching any of the sides. It's kind of like playing the childhood game operation. So, once I've either removed it this way, or I've come to a situation where I think I can get more wax out, I'm going to redo this step, have the patient hold it, and do this again. Utilizing my curette cuts down time on constantly flushing the ear, so I'm not running into the ear becoming very red or having any chance of bleeding. Now the other situation is when I do find that I might have something I need to remove from the ear, like a dome or maybe a piece of wax. This is something that will probably be very helpful if you actually have your patient care coordinator or someone else in the office to help you. What I can do here is have my PCC hold the light and pull the tragus forward. Now my patient right here is just going to kind of show this for you. Just so I can show you that as long as I have a good light source, I can go ahead and use this with my good hand, pulling on the ear to try to get the light where I need to have it. The other situation that I can do is if it's close enough to me to get a better view if I don't need a light. I can go ahead and push the tragus forward with my tool and then this way I'll have a much larger opening to make sure I can remove what I need without causing any injury. I'm going to quickly show another angle to show you a little bit better on how I like to use the curette. I'm going to try to keep my hand out of the way and I'm going to leave the light off so that you can see it better on the camera but I'm going to bridge and brace and with moving the tragus forward with my tool and pulling back on the pinna you can see that it will be a lot easier for me to see what I'm doing I can insert this a lot safer getting it further without injuring the patient and then I can remove the wax that I need a lot of times when I'm looking at the wax or at least I know where it is because of the autoscopy that I've performed I can see whether I want to be on top or on the bottom to have the best success on getting behind it and pulling it towards me.